Hi, Fullness family. I'm Derek. For those who don't know me, I have been at Fullness for more than half of my life. So you really are like my family. Um, Nathan and I have been talking and laughing about that old saying that says, may you live in interesting times. Um, Q2020. <laughs> I get it now. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, so yeah, um, I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for six and a half years. I have to say, I didn't always want to be a nurse. It wasn't like my, my dream job. My parents are nurses. My grandmother's a nurse. My aunt's a nurse. It's in the family. I've heard the stories. Uh, I always knew what nurses really did, and I was not interested. So it was quite a shock to me when God kind of pushed me that direction um, for made me go to nursing school and there have been days where I'm like see God I knew I, I shouldn't do this and um why am I doing this again and um but but I'm glad I did it's it's changed my life and, and you know he knows better than I do obviously all that to say pandemic and I'm a nurse uh, you would think that that would have just been the last straw and maybe if it was just in and of myself, it would have been. Um, but so when you start to hear these stories and the, oh my gosh, people are freaking out and things are closing down and hospitals are filling up. And um, you would think that my reaction would be panic and fear. But I have to say that it wasn't so, it was peace. And for such a time as this, and I really, that just echoed in my heart for such a time as this, this is not a cosmic joke. I am not a victim of God's pulling some sort of trick on me. He really wants me here now during this time for a reason and to walk in that in faith and in confidence that he has me no matter what happens you know, it says if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. You know, I'm not really scared for my life, honestly. But but when push comes to shove where rubber meets the road, you know, I'm his. And I want to say thank you for all the people that have prayed for me, the messages I've got, the letters I've got in the mail. Um, You know, it's a blessing. And I have felt those prayers. And so I wanted to say thank you for that. Um, I also wanted to say one more thing um, that the Lord showed me this spring and I was reading um, in John after Jesus is resurrected from the dead and all the disciples, they rush to the tomb and they can't find the body and they're freaking out and they don't know what's happened to the body, where, where they've taken the body and um, it starts in, well at 10 it says, then the disciples went back to their homes but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put, them. put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus woman he said why are you crying who is it you are looking for um and when I read that it just hit me like a ton of bricks Mary is standing outside the empty tomb that Jesus just came out of and she's weeping she's going this is the end there's nothing left there's nothing left for me Jesus is gone, and she was hopeless, but she didn't realize that she was literally living in the very best day ever, ever. It changed everything, and she was right there, and she was talking to her risen Savior, Jesus, right next to her, and she was still crying. She didn't understand, and and then he said her name. He said, Mary, and it was like her eyes were open, and you saw him, and 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 everything changed for her at that moment. 
But for me, I have to ask myself, are the tears that I've been crying, the problems we're seeing, the walls we feel like we're standing in front of with no way out, we can't see the other side yet. Um, Mary was oblivious. She didn't know. But there was hope. And so we can't hold on to our disappointments because we don't always know what, what comes next. And so I just encourage you to hold on to your hope because we don't know what comes next. I can't say, oh, everything's going to be fine. Nobody's, you know, I don't know what, but I know who. And the who is faithful because Jesus is taking care of us. And whether we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we go home to him. And so hold on to your who. I love you, fullness.